What is up, catfish people? I hope you're doing good. I'm getting some stuff straightened out here on the screen. A bunch of stuff that I don't need to see. Boom. Uh, oh, well, no, I don't need that. All right, hope everybody's doing good. I'm gonna give everybody a few minutes to get in here and pick up the live feed. See who all it's going out to. Sitting out here on the water on uh, what it's turned out to be a beautiful, beautiful day so far. But I just got a lightning alert. So waiting for that to come up here. What's that? Let me see. There we go. Prayers answered. Well, hello, Aaron. Hello, Jonathan. Bunch of people jumping in, I know. Hope y'all are doing well. Sorry for the interruption there. I forgot to hit do not disturb on my phone. So I'll probably get phone calls and text in the middle of this thing. So hope everybody's doing good. Uh, we'll give a few more people time to get in here. I keep putting my hand up. When I put my hand, I can see how many people we got watching and jumping in here. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dieter Melhorn. I'm the guy's name who is on here. It's not dieter. I'm obviously fat, um, but that's my name. So German name, Southern accent, confusing. What's up, Lee Huffman? I am on Lake Chimichanga. No, I'm on Lake Wiley. Uh, between the bridges. You're asking yourself, what bridges? Well, that'll give you enough of a clue that you can look around and figure out where it's at. Hope you're doing good, Lee. Lee Huffman on here, folks, from Huffy's Guide Service, one of my uh, fellow buddy guides here in this area. Hope y'all are doing well. Uh, give everybody a minute to get in. I'll give you the rundown. All right, we got a pretty good crowd, so that's pretty good to go. First of all, I want to say happy Veterans Day to all the veterans that are out there watching. Thank you for your service. Thank you for what you did. Even if you were not blessed to serve in the Air Force, I appreciate you serving. So God bless all of you, whether you're serving now or previously. We appreciate what you do for the country. America thanks you for taking the oath. So uh, for that... Crack a, crack a, crack a can. Raise the toast of Diet Sundrop to all the veterans out there. Boom. Uh, decided to come out today. Uh, give you a rundown real quickly on what's going on. I had a guide trip scheduled for today. Called the people. Said, hey, listen, they're calling for thunderstorms, maybe some rain. It's up to you whether we go or not. Uh, not everybody is suited to go out in inclement weather. So uh, they opted not to. So that's, I decided I called two other people. Uh, I called two sports writers. I got two guys that write for magazines, online sites that wanted to do some fishing articles. And I called them and said, hey, um, last shot for about 10 days to go out. Uh, hold those questions there, Jared, I wanna get to that. And the, the, the sports riders weren't into it either. Uh, they looked at the forecast and said, man, it's looking nasty. Lightning, storms, blah, blah, blah. So guess what? I'm here. So uh, I decided to come fishing. Decided to do some uh, really fishing for one fish kind of fishing today, and that's what I've done. I haven't caught any big ones. I've caught two fish so far. I've anchored in two other spots and uh, just rolled up into this spot, kind of a little break out of the wind. We got a south wind, water rolling down the river. Uh, they're releasing a lot of water because of the rain that's coming in. There's been a big drop. There was a drop in the lake. It's come back up. It's kind of all over the place. So anyway, that's what's going on. The fishing has not exactly been on fire today. Uh, I had one good pull down that pulled off, caught a couple of other 10, 12 pound fish, and that's been it. But where I'm fishing at is not exactly uh, very conducive. Pardon me while I pour my uh, drink here into the cup. Very conducive to uh, catching a lot of fish. Most of the, the most of the lot of fish are lower in the lake. So I'm up in the river section. So anyway, that's what it is. I'm happy to be here. I'm blessed to be here. And uh, if you have a weather app and you look around Charlotte and you see any storms coming, let me know because I can't take a look right now. Uh, I did get a, a, a lightning alert that there's some lightning in the area. So uh, I'm listening. I know there's a cell west of here. So we'll see what's going on. Uh, but yeah, this is my last day to get to fish for uh, about eight days. I'm going to Kentucky. Somebody asked just a second ago, 
uh, about whether I was coming to Kentucky. Yes, heading out to Kentucky tomorrow, and uh, we'll be out there deer hunting for a few days. Uh, opening day in Kentucky is for rifle is Saturday, so we'll be out there taking my son Grayson. Uh, I'm gonna play guide for him out there. Hey Tim, Handy, how you doing, buddy? I uh, just saw you pop in there. Thank you. Um, and uh, we're gonna be out there for a little bit. That's kind of what we've been doing this fall. It's been a lot of hunting and uh, a lot of time in the woods deer hunting. I love to hunt and uh, my son is really eat up with it. He's 13 now and he loves to go and he's kind of gotten ahead on some of his schoolwork uh, so that he can go. So I've been taking him and that's why I haven't been out fishing much. Um, been trying to put up some videos. I got a bunch of stuff put up that I shot earlier in the year, but I really hadn't been fishing much and that happens every year. Uh, the, actually, I have been fishing. The fishing that I've been doing is uh, guide trips. So uh, that's what I've been going on. Thank you to our Palmetto Cats. Appreciate that, buddy. And that goes out to all the veterans, I'm sure. Um, uh, it's been guide trips. I've done a bunch of guide trips this October. And uh, fishing's been pretty good. It's been up and down. There's been some times, you know, with the water releases, weather, that kind of stuff. But we've got extremely warm temperatures. I am out here in, look at those sexy legs. Mm. I'm out here in shorts today and short sleeve shirt. Second week of November, uh, we've got 70 degree water temperatures. Uh, yesterday's guy trip, we caught two flatheads right off the bat. We got double slams, uh, double Lake Wally slams yesterday. So it's, uh, it's a little bit weird weather. It's a little warmer than what it is. I got a Facebook memory from last year when I was in Kentucky and we had snow. We drove to, I think it was the second or third day uh, that would be this, you know, same week, and we were driving to the stand in snow, so uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy weather, but it is what it is. Joshua, what are you using, Mr. Miller? I assume you're talking about bait. Well, you know what my bait is. No, it's not chicken. Uh, it is actually gizzard shad. I've got some gizzard shad left that I caught uh, from the trip, and I'm kind of burning through those. I'm kind of doubling them up and making them to big gobs on the hook. They're not big shad. They're about that long. It's probably that long and uh, I'm putting those on the hook doubling them up and got them on Santee rigs on the bottom and uh, just anchored up here a little deep hole a little scour hole on the outside edge marked a couple of two or three fish and uh, so there it is we're gonna see what happens if any of them bite like I said it hasn't been on fire today but uh, where I'm fishing has not loaded with fish that's one thing about the lower lake uh, there's a lot of fish or there's a lot of bait and there's fish and it's like it's almost like you're trying to feed somebody that's already ate so uh, i was just trying to come up here find a big one find maybe some of these resident fish that stay up here all year long regardless and try to catch one so we'll see what happens let's see what some of the questions were there uh yeah kentucky cat man's talking about the temperatures last year you'll remember the snow we had uh i've i've had light snow in kentucky before deer hunting uh, and we've had ice that always seems to happen every couple of years, but I've never had actually a snowfall. We got up one of the mornings and was driving out in the snow. So Lee, good luck out there, buddy. I saw that you're going Steve Douglas, catfish dude, catch a fish. Come on, man. Steve Douglas in the house. Uh, Steve Douglas is from monster rod holders. And, uh, if y'all hadn't seen, I got to say this, we got this question has come up with a bunch of people that I've had on here doing guide trips, and that's his net. Uh, if you need a big fish net, uh, get one. This one is the 80. I didn't get the big one. I got the little one, uh, but this is the 80. This is the handle off of it. It's detachable. It's made out of, like, fiberglass. The thing that's cool about this net, I did a video on it. There it is. Woohoo! It will put me in it. It's big enough for me. Well, maybe not, but it's big. Uh, the basket on it, the net part. Uh, the thing I found, I had been using the one I had from Bass Pro Shop. You watch my old videos, I got one from Bass Pro Shop. Great net, uh, all aluminum handle. It's octagonal in shape, uh, but it got crushed so it wouldn't close. Used that net for years and uh, needed something bigger uh, because it was getting so. The issue was fish, you get them in head first into the net. The, they hit the net, their tail bends, boom, they're flipping the net, they're coming out of it. The one Steve sells is very, very deep. And if you watch the video on my page, look it up about netting big fish, I'll show you the difference between that one, a fray bill, and uh, 
the one I got from Bass Pro Shop. You can see the difference. So it's a uh, it's a good one. So anyway, Steve just made me think of that. So uh, see what who else is in here. Uh, I was thinking tap tap. Was there a bite? Is there a bite back here? I think somebody just drove by on the road down here and was blowing the horn because they knew where I was at. I just heard it. Is there a bite? Oh, right rod, right rod. There it goes. There it goes. It may be into another rod. That one's getting hit too. Oh, go, go, go. He's hooked up. Let's go catch it. Make sure if he's still there by the time I get there. Ah, it popped off. I think he's in this other line. With that. Actually, I don't think that was the rod. I think it was just around this one. Bam! Hooked up. Hooked up. Not a monster, but we kind of got some current, so it's going to be a five pound fish and he's going to feel bigger. May not be five pounds. I'm trying to take. Oh yeah, he's a little fish. Oh, it popped off right there. Pulled off right there at the bait. It's a channel cat. In all honesty, it's probably about four pounds. It was not that big. It was a channel cat, but you didn't get to see it. I'm gonna chunk another bait out. See, I got to double up my weights a little bit here. I don't have any big, big weights for me, with me. I wasn't planning on coming up here, but Santee rig, small hook, peg float, weight, swivel. 50 pound, 60 pound leader, Andy Mono, Andy on the main line. There it is. Andy, that's a Ancient Mariner reel. I think it's a 6,000 series. And that is a B&M Silver Catalyte rod that I'm using. So it's kind of the rundown of the tackle. There's the baits. Like I said, gizzard jab. Like I said before, what I'm doing, I call it a Polish fillet. Cut the tail off, split him up the middle, basically fillet him from the back. That's where I get the Polish fillet, kind of like Alan Kulwicki in the Polish victory lap from NASCAR. Some of y'all will get that, some, most of you won't. Go through it, hook it like that, and that flap's hanging down. Then roll it back through there. It's basically a way to make a little bait big. So, we're gonna chuck it back out and we'll get this other one back in the water. And I'll try to pay better attention. Okay. Put a fresh one on this one. This one came unfurled. Probably stand to use bigger hooks. I've got like five volt hooks on here. I probably should have eight on with the way I'm doing these baits. So stand by. Again, the bait, a little fillet, the flap, hooking it through there, rolling it back through. See what we can get. that one over toward the bank. All right, we're back. Back in action. Sorry about that. Thank you guys for paying attention and telling me there was a bite back there. Are you north or south of 85? Tell me, Bob, which do you think I am? Which to, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds. Which do you think I am, Bob? North or south of 85? Five, four, three, two, one. Ah, wrong answer. Uh, right up there. That's the I-85 bridge right there. Hoof. 
I'm south of it, south of 85. Uh, just up here in kind of a nice little pretty place. And yes, there is, yeah, the 74 bridge behind me. I'm right in between it. Brown Town, that's right. Somebody said Brown Town. That's right over that way. So uh, lots of memories there. Fast forward to the next part. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> some of y'all will get that. Most of you won't. What rig do you recommend for bank fishing for catfish? David, the quick and easy one's the uh, Carolina rig. It is the easiest one to go with and the one that is going to be the least trouble for you, easiest to tie, easiest to set up, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, hey, this is cool. I got somebody kayaking right next to me. Y'all can watch. Get him. Right there he is. He was probably wondering why I was talking to myself sitting here. He just paddles away, pretending. I'm like, there he is. There he is. See? See? Looks like a banana. Like a banana boat. Get in the boat. Banana boat. So, anyway, yeah, the Carolina rig, that's what I would go with. That's the easiest. I use these Santee rigs too. I haven't bank fished in two years now. So, uh, tell you, I, uh, the Carolina rig is Using braid as my main line. Did I make a smart move? Darren, let me tell you. I use braid on these perch rods. These are my little spinning rods. I catch crappy perch. Blah, blah, blah. I got them on those. And I've actually got a couple of videos up recently where I talk about spinning reels. The spinning reels that I used had braid on them. The reason I had braid on them because I used them saltwater fishing. Fishing for sharks and redfish. Here's my take on braid. Um, I don't like it for catfish. Don't go tear it off your reels, though you can still catch fish with it. I personally don't like it, and I'll tell you a couple of reasons. Again, this is this is totally a personal preference thing and everybody's different. Here's the reason I don't like it. One, it's a instant knot when it gets tangled. If fishing multiple lines like we do when we drift and troll, we've got multiple lines out. Lines will inevitably get tangled no matter what you do. When you have a braided line and it gets into a, a tangle, you might as well cut it. That's one of the things I hate about it. The other thing I hate about it, it is unforgiving. There is no stretch to it. Now, some people will argue, well, I let my drag do the stretch and I let my rod tip do take care of the stretch and the forgiveness. That's fine. If you want to fish that way, again, that's an individual thing. For me, I like the stretch and the forgiveness of monofilament better. So it's a very much a personal preference thing. The other thing is abrasion resistance, which there's no argument about. Monofilament is more abrasion resistant. Um, it, it, it tolerates rough surfaces much better than braid does. So uh, the reason why, you're probably asking, well, why do you use it saltwater fishing? Well, the biggest reason is big fish, sharks, that type of stuff, you need a lot of line capacity. And that's one of the advantages to putting uh, the line I do on the spinning reel. So that's kind of why I use it there. So it's not a mistake. Use it, uh, try it, use it until it's, you run out of it and then maybe try monofilament and see if it works better for you or if it's something to work, but they'll both catch fish. You will notice the difference. The one thing I did notice using it on the spinning reels in the videos, the bites with monofilament are like, boom, rod goes over. With the braid, it's like this herky jerky kind of thing because there's no give and no stretch in it. Does that, you, know, you, you may be wondering what's the problem there. My issue with that would be that you're more apt to pull a hook out of a fish's mouth. So everybody sees it different. Everybody's got different takes on it. I don't use braid for catching catfish, but keep using it. Use it till it's done. Try use some mono then if you want to. See which one you like better and go with what's going to work for you. So see who else is in here. Bunch of people in. How many people we got in there? Oh, 211 people. Wow. Thanks for dropping by, guys. I'm Dieter Melhorn, in case you're wondering. Uh, anybody new that's dropped into the chat, I'm out here fishing our, I'm on Lake Wiley up in the river section. And uh, trying to catch a catfish. Caught one a minute ago. Got it up to the edge of the boat. And uh, thank you. Whoever threw in the 25 bucks and the three. Oh, there's all kinds of money plopping in there. Uh, thank you very much. Who was that? Let's scroll back. Somebody's just not showing a name up there. Oh, Michael. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that very much. Uh, mucho gracias. Uh, it goes to pay for bandwidth. And, <laughs> so, and boat gas. So I appreciate that. Uh, thanks for the uh, kind words there. The people saying they like the channel. I appreciate it. I... Uh, I'm hoping to do more of the live stuff once I kind of get my camera straight. 
crooked horizons drive me nuts. Uh, I'm trying to do more of the live feeds. Ooh, that's a bad sale of rain. Ooh, that looks bad over there. I hope that stays west of me. Sorry. Um, try to do some more of these once I kind of get past deer season because I have been spending a lot of time in the woods doing that. Um, but it's uh, cr keep cranking the content out. That is the plan for the channel. Uh, a little bit slow right now with stuff going on. But uh, as we kind of get here into the good fall fishing, uh, you see some more of it. Warren was asking how deep I'm. I'm sitting in 16.8 feet of water. Uh, this area where I'm fishing up here is, I ain't gonna say shallow, it's shallower, but uh, it's just a little deep hole here. I marked a couple of fish in it and decided to set up on it because I wanted to do a live deal with you guys. I put a video up today. I think today's video was on crappy fishing or crappie fishing. So, uh, uh, I got that one up. I generally don't put up videos on the same day or go live, but uh, uh, I decided to today. So, Jesus King, yes, Kibo, amen. I agree with you on that. Do catfish migrate? No. Now, catfish will move, but as far as a migration in the by uh, the biological sense, no, they don't really migrate. They will make very large movements. Uh, and we're talking miles and miles up and down the river from one end to another of a lake. Um, and they've been tracked in some of the rivers and stuff going many 20, 30, 40, 50 miles. But as far as a migration, no, they will move with bait, uh, but bait kind of, you know, makes a run up and down. Now, to a certain extent, uh, some of the, sorry, I heard thought I heard something creep. Like some of the shad uh, make almost a migration spawning run, uh, which is a, uh, a very big move. Uh, and the catfish will go with them, follow them, follow them as a food source, but it's not really a migration in the true migration sense. I'll show you what I'm looking at over near me. That's up that way. <laughs> oh, that looks pretty. That looks pretty. Hopefully that stays that way. So, uh, there we go. There we go. Hopefully that stays that way. I think that's going to stay west of us. Pretty skies that way. Not so pretty over that way. I'm kind of teetering on the edge here. So do I need heavy rods to fish from the bank? I don't have a boat. Well, Joseph, here's what it comes down to, dude. Um, it depends what kind of fish you got where you're fishing at. Um, and, you know, I made the same mistake when I started trying to pursue bigger fish. I was buying some of the stupidest, biggest rods that I really didn't need. Uh, it depends where you're fishing. Uh, if you're fishing in a place where you're chunking big baits, you got heavy current, you're chunking big sinkers, you may need some heavier tackle. If you're fishing in a municipal pond, no, because you're not really going to have any of that stuff to deal with. So uh, sometimes you can overkill it. Uh, I'm getting ready to do a video about the ugly stick catfish rods. I've caught thousands and thousands of fish on the ugly stick catfish rods. They're kind of a medium action. Um, rod they're a great rod for lakes they're similar to the big cat fever rods that i got uh but less uh i guess is the best way to describe them but i caught thousands and thousands of catfish on that 40 50 60 pound fish on that my personal best for years had come off of that rod so you know don't feel like these yeah i guess the best way to describe it is don't feel like you need all that stuff to go chasing big fish. You can do it with a lot, lot less stuff. Uh, Bob coming in with the uh, alert there of moderate to light. Well, that's good. I, I wish I had my... I need me almost another one. Looks like it's going to stay west of me. I'm thinking. Talk to me, Bob. Everything is kind of traveling south to north from what I watched on the radar. So my concern is looking that way. If that was that way, I'd probably punch out of this. But I may still get wet, so... We'll see. Good questions, by the way, guys. I love answering this stuff. Uh, again, um, it 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 stuff varies depending on where you're fishing in this country. I kind of give you what I know from where I fish. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what's your tactic for stronger currents? I fish the same section of the Kaaba, and it's running strong lately. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I mean, I like to anchor in it. The thing I've not perfected is the bottom bouncing in this, and I've never put any time into doing it. It is probably something that if any of us over here on the East Coast, especially Southeast, that are reservoir fishermen would put the time into doing, the guys that fish the, uh, the, the constant flow rivers, Ohio and uh, Mississippi, Missouri, they are good with that technique and the moving. Uh, but 
for me, I prefer to anchor. I prefer to pick spots, whether it be holes, brush, breaks, whatever, and try to fish those anchored up. That is generally my way of doing it. Uh, it's, again, I think some people who would master the craft of bottom bumping and floating and all that, I think you could up your game some uh, by doing that. I wish, I keep saying I'm gonna do it and I just never take the time to do it. It is one of those things, it is a skill set that takes time to learn how to do. And uh, the guys who are good at it are good at it for a reason. So, uh, ooh, that wind is changing, I don't know, same direction. Uh, where are you fishing, California, what state? Billy, I am in North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte. Charlotte's right up there. Uh, not far, probably 12 miles from downtown Charlotte is where I'm at right now. So, uh, yes, North Carolina. North Carolina, uh, how are your chaos reels holding up? Some people have asked about reels. Everything is working. The one I finally had to replace the Paul in was the Pinky. Uh, the pink uh, Ancient Mariner reel replaced the Paul in it. And by the way, where's Pinky? Pinky's right there. Uh, Ancient Mariner claims to have a lifetime warranty. I decided to see if that was true. Now, a Paul, let me just tell you this. The Paul is a little thing that goes back and forth in there on a level one. They wear out. I don't care what kind of reel you get. A Paul wears out. They're about five bucks, and they drop right in there. I actually called them and said, hey, my Paul's out, uh, and they sent me a new one. Now, I don't know if they do that for everybody. Maybe it's because I made Pinky a household name in the catfish world, uh, but they did. And I salute them for that. Um, like I said, the Pauls are just, they're like a $5 item. They're going to, I'll show you what they are. For you guys, I, I say all this stuff and I, I realize a lot of people don't know exactly what I'm talking about. So let me show you real quick. I really wish a fish would jerk this out of my hand while I'm showing you. Uh, the Paul is in here. It's going to be hard to do. I get hit this is really gonna knock my camera in the water this is the level one this thing here takes your line and it runs it back and forth level across the reel a lot of conventional reels don't have that and you would do that with your thumb running your thumb back and forth okay this makes life a lot easier the pawl is the little thing that goes into this worm gear it's called a worm gear because it's kind of wormy and goes around and that's what makes it go back and forth across here when you crank the handle like that. See how it moves? See how the rod moves? But anyway, that paw wears out because it's two pieces of metal that are just rubbing together. And it's something you replace. Abu Garcia's um, goes out on them too. So that's kind of, my whole point is they're holding up fine. The Chaos uh, from PC Fun is working fine. And so is the uh, uh, slime cat reel. I had to do some work. I had two slime cat reels. One out of the box, perfect. The other one, the centering of the spool was off and there were some issues with casting it. I've got that dialed in now and I've not had any more problems. So uh, it's worked out really good. So they're all working. Um, you know, for what I fish, I fish them within the means that they're supposed to be in. So, you know, I'm not overloading them or anything like that. So I think that helps. Somebody asked about the catfish conference. The Catfish Conference is on the books for the Expo Center, and Steve says it's happening. If he's still in the chat, chime in with any information. Their website is down, and that was the thing that concerned me. Obviously, it's going to depend on what happens with the coronavirus, I would assume, as to whether or not they're even allowed to have a gathering conference like that. So, um, you know, that's still, we're still, what, Three months away from that so hopefully it is i plan to be there and hopefully you guys will come too if you're new to the catfish world that's basically the catfishing trade show that takes place in louisville last weekend of february so uh if you can get out there that's my steering wheel knob there by the way uh hopefully you can get out there there'll be a lot of people there a lot of stuff a lot of tackle anything catfishing is there so uh oh, that's she has so nice one is this for somebody from Poland? As in Poland, as in Europe, Poland? It looks like a Polish name. And I have the Polish filet on my hook right now. So if you're truly from Poland, 
I think you will take the record for the furthest away somebody is watching the show. And if you are watching, thank you for watching. Yes, we are blessed with good weather in America right now, uh, it, or at least where I'm at. Uh, this isn't going to last long. Uh, we'll be out here freezing to death. I'll be out here bundled up here in a few weeks, and all this will come to an end. But for now, it's uh, it's good fishing. For you guys that joined in late, I'm anchored up in a river, 70 degree water temperature, fishing with gizzard chad, and uh, it's only three fish in the boat. I'm going to count that last one because I tried to flip him in the boat. Uh, but it's not crazy. It's not on fire. So, checking some rods. Everything's still on the bottom. Real good. Real good, real good. Uh, shout out and prayers to Lyle Stokes from Catfish Weekly. Uh, Catfish Weekly is a show that is on on Monday night, and uh, it's a catfishing show. It's a live show. Uh, he had surgery today. Uh, he uh, made it through surgery okay. I think he had a shoulder or something or another, and uh, he's out and doing good, and hopefully he didn't make any doctors mad in uh, going into it or coming out of it, so uh, his shoulder will still work. He'll still be able to fish and uh, may even be able to cast. So yeah, check out Catfish Weekly. Uh, another one to check out is Palmetto Cats. Uh, he's in here in the chat. Check him out. He's got a show. Um, you need to go vote on uh, the, I think we're still voting for awards, right? For whatever the awards are, uh, show that's going to be coming on in December. He can fill y'all in on that. Throw a link in there and uh, good show that uh, comes on Sunday night and check it out. Uh, let see if there's any questions in here. Too. Thanks for the crappy video too. Love watching all your videos. Thank you, Chris. Crappy, crappy. I'll say it both ways depending on what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've got a bunch of stuff I shot in the spring, some striper fishing, some crappie fishing. Crappie and striper! Let me move this here. Don't do real good on my channel because I think most of you guys are catfish oriented, but uh, I'm still putting some out. I'd like to broaden into that a little bit more, but uh, catfish is kind of the main focus and that's what I'm out here doing today. So, uh, put the like on how to do that. Boom. I think you just became one. Let's see if you did. Yeah, you're good. I did. I did make you a moderator. You're a good one to have in there. You keep the hurt shirt. Ooh, ooh, is this a pot? Is this a pot? No, I thought we had a pot there going on. But let's see what kind of, uh, hope we catch a big one. I'm trying, Mr. Manning. I'm trying. Is it raining? No, it's not. Not right now. It is raining in that direction. Uh, as a matter of fact, it looks like there's some rain right there above the bridge. I may 